Hi everyone, welcome to this Jenkins tutorial, Jenkins versus other continuous integration servers, brought to you by BlazeMeter. My name is Jason Silverman. Uh, I work at BlazeMeter, uh, and BlazeMeter is a SaaS platform for performance testing, including as part of the continuous integration process. Continuous integration is now a vital part of the modern software development lifecycle. When developers create new features or fix defects, it's critical that new code changes won't harm or have a negative impact on previously existing software elements. Key, object key objectives to keep in mind here include, first, that the whole process of software development, starting from a single commit, compilation, running tests, et cetera, and ending up with packaging and delivery, needs to be as automated as possible to make the uh, process as efficient as possible. Second, that performance testing should be an inherent part of the continuous delivery uh, process, starting from the early development stages, which is now uh, being called shifting left. Um, next, if everything goes well, the resulting software package should be packaged for distribution or even deployed into production. And finally, if there's an error, the relevant team members should be notified quickly in order to uh, overcome that error to fix it. As software development and, and testing techniques are becoming more and more complex, there's a need in a special software to orchestrate the aforementioned processes, as well as to ensure that the steps required for software delivery are being executed in the correct order, nothing is missing, and failures are correctly handled. This is what a continuous integration server really is. So let's cover the most prominent free and open source solutions and review them from the perspectives of, perspective, uh, of integrating performance testing into a continuous integration and delivery process. Let's start with Jenkins, the leading open source CI tool. Uh, for the last few years, it holds the top position in DevOps tool chains due to being free, open source and modular, and I should point out that although its baseline functionality is very limited, there are more than 1,000 plugins which, which extend Jenkins capabilities and provide extra integrations. Jenkins is a Java-based tool, so you'll need to run, uh, so you need Java runtime environment to run it. All the extensions and plugins are also to be developed in Java. Now, given the underlying Java runtime, Jenkins can be installed on any operating system where Java runs. Out of the box, or with default, or the de with the default plugins, if you will, Jenkins supports the following. And now you need to remember that uh, Jenkins functionality is not limited to the above features. It can be extended via Jenkins plugins, even for very unusual scenarios. For instance, even if you, you can kick off a Blaze Meter test and display the results in the Jenkins dashboard uh, using the Blankens J Meter. Uh, sorry, the BlazeMeter Jenkins plugin. Uh, you can see here on the screen that Jenkins out of the box uh, supports version control systems, Subversion, and Git. Builders including command line, Maven, Ant, and Gradle. And notifications, uh, Git publisher, email notification, and set status for GitHub commit. Here's an example of the Jenkins dashboard. In the bottom left corner, you can see that a build is being executed at the moment, uh, and as well as the recent of, uh, a history of recent builds, excuse me. The next software I want to talk about is called BuildBot. Uh, it's another CI tool which is trusted by Mozilla for bringing excellence into their products and is now used at Mozilla, Chromium, WebKit, and many other projects. BuildBot is Python-based, uh, and as such, it runs everywhere where Python runs. You can deploy it onto any POSIX compliant operating system. Moreover, BuildBot config files are basically Python scripts, meaning that the configuration is version control friendly and you have all the power of the Python language while defining your build plan. It means extreme and unbeatable flexibility and capabilities. You can see on the screen, this is as for July of 2016, BuildBot supports the following tools out of the box. I'm not going to read every single one. Uh, you can see them all on the screen, but I will read some. Uh, version control systems include Mercurial, Git, CVS, Perforce, uh, Repo, and more. 
builders include command line configure, um, VC++, tree size, and notifications include email notifications, IRC bot, PB listener, uh, Garrett status push, GitHub status push, stash, and more. Here's the BuildBot dashboard uh, with one build currently running along with the history of several previous text executions. Just to note, uh, BuildBot installation and configuration is by itself a separate large topic as the instructions may differ depending on each operating system and architecture. So it's better to refer to BuildBot's documentation. Finally, for this uh, tutorial, I wanna focus on cruise control. Cruise control is Many people might be familiar with it. It's the most mature uh, continuous integration server out of today's scope, and probably one of the oldest CI solutions in existence. The first release was over 15 years ago. Uh, it was originally developed as a framework to orchestrate build, testing, and other software development life cycles for one particular internal project at ThoughtWorks, but later Cruise Control became a standalone continuous integration server. Um, Cruise Control is based on Java, so it's cross-platform by design. There are also implementations in .NET and Ruby. And the latest uh, release provides the following integrations out of the box. I won't, again, I won't read every single one, though. You can see them all on the screen. Uh, version control systems include Mercurial, Subversion, CVS, Perforce, Acurev, Alien Brain, PC, PTC Integrity, Smart Team, Surround SCM, and more. Builders include command line, Ant, Nan, Maven, Rake, and Fing. And post build, you can go with email or CC tray, a desktop application. Cruise Control's configuration is XML based. Uh, you can check out the configuration reference for all possible uh, settings. Uh, there's also a Java based GUI front end, CC, CC config, and perhaps it'll be easier to use it instead of manually editing the XML config file. What you see on the screen is an example of the minimal configuration for JMeter, uh, Apache JMeter, the uh, leading open source load testing tool uh, for JMeter execution in the command line non-GUI mode. And here's the cruise control project dashboard containing a history of performance test execution and statistics on one of the builds. So I wanted to finally talk about integrating performance testing tools uh, into uh, the CI process, and I'm gonna focus on Jenkins specifically here. Running a performance test as part of the build is fine. However, it doesn't resolve the main goal, which is automation and automated results analysis. The whole idea of the continuous integration process is making software build and all associated process absolutely unattended. As a result, it's important to have some, sort of, some form of mechanism to fail the build when the performance test produces an error or the average response time ex exceeds a certain threshold. In some cases, it can be resolved via plugins like the performance plugin for Jenkins. Uh, you can uh, see more about the performance plugin in another one of our uh, Jenkins tutorials about um, Jenkins and JMeter. But in more advanced scenarios, there might be not enough time or budget to develop the plugin or to change the load testing script. So what you see on the screen, that's why I would recommend running your performance test via a tool called Taurus. It's an open source automation friendly framework for continuous testing, which supports a lot of the underlying load generation tools, including but not limited to Apache JMeter, Gatling, the Grinder, Tsung, Locust, and more. Uh, the key Taurus features from the CI perspective are First, that you don't need to change your existing test scripts. Taurus can consume everything. Uh, second, that you can easily define fail uh, criteria using flexible pass-fail service. Um, the most important bit is that Taurus will return non-zero exit code so that any continuous integration server will treat the Taurus execution step as failed. Um, third, that Taurus can produce results in JUnit format via the JUnit uh, XML reporter. The absolute majority of CI servers can understand the JUnit output and as a result can display and or plot results on the build dashboard. Before you go, for more information, 
If you would like more informo information and to sign up uh, for free uh, for a BlazeMeter performance testing account, you can do so at www.blazemeter.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at BlazeMeter. For more information on Taurus, which I just mentioned, you, and to install it, you can go to gettaurus.org. Blaze Meter's blog, which is, has a ton of information on JMeter, on Jenkins, and on other CI and CD, CD tools uh, and uh, processes, please visit us at blazemeter.com slash blog. You can also visit our resources page, which has um, all of our um, videos and tutorials and webinar recordings and white papers at blazemeter.com slash resources. And finally, for any additional questions, or to request a demo from one of our performance engineers, please contact us at sales at blazemeter.com. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.